Good morning. Um, my name is Tarek Taiba. This is Sonny and this is Eric. We're representing Seattle University. Um, we talked yesterday about WikiLeaks and New York Times collaboration and uh, what the New York Times should be publishing WikiLeaks or not. I'd like to start by um, differentiating the difference uh, or pointing the differences between publishing and covering a story. Uh, publishing a story would be like what the New York Times did, went to uh, actually receive the documents through WikiLeaks, and they went through all the documents and came up with a story. Uh, where, for example, if you look at CNN, which were also approached by WikiLeaks, uh, they did not get these documents, but they covered the story either through what the New York Times have said, or their other, uh, their second option was to go and uh, interview Julian Assange. The, uh, representer, uh, the representer of uh, WikiLeaks um, and the founder as well. Um, the objectives of WikiLeaks is total transparency. So no secrets, no hidden agendas, no anything. Uh, and if you take that objective, if you will, that means that there should be no secrets between uh, foreign policy governments, no secrets there, no de no deeds, no secret conversations whatsoever. Um, and if we support that, we will give WikiLeaks too much power. And too much power could, leads to, uh, could lead to abuse of power. Uh, for instance, if we look at the incidents in um, Tunisia, where um, the government was overthrown by its people, which was mostly fueled by WikiLeaks. Um, when we publish and support WikiLeaks, we're giving them too much power, and this could cause a higher paranoia in, in foreign policy. So um, a government like Saudi Arabia that was mostly talked about in the cables, that was released by uh, um, WikiLeaks and published by the New York Times. Now the government of Saudi Arabia will have different way of talking to the government of the United States because it does not trust that the secrets are going to be kept anymore because of the leak that happened. This will cause tension between governments in general. Um, the second point I would like to talk about is the standard, the ethical standards that are in this case, which would be uh, the WikiLeaks look at the world from a de deontological point of view, more of a Kantian point of view in the deontology. Uh, where um, they they like universal uh, universalizability of uh, the actions that are taken and uh, reversibility as well. So if you were put in this position, would you want the same action that was taken before be taken on you or not? Um, to give a clearer example, if you look at a torture example, for example. You, you have this building, building X, that has a bomb in it. And person who knows about this bomb and knows where it is, from a teleological point of view, which is mostly um, uh, utilitarianism within uh, there, it's OK to torture this person in order to get the greatest good for the greatest number of people within this community where uh, a deontological point of view, universability in particular, universalizability in particular, does not give you that right to torture whatsoever. Uh, they would go against it completely. And WikiLeaks looked at, looks at the world from this point of view, whereas governments usually act in a, a teleological point of view where they're trying to increase the welfare of the general public and decrease the harm for that general public as well. So uh, if you look at Dick Cheney, for example, he's, he never pointed it out. But if you look at his policies and his way of action, it's mostly uh, in a utilitarian point of view. And this is mostly how other governments usually act. So right there, you will see a clash in getting to a position where different views are looking at the same position from different angles. And they all look at it so many different ways that there might there should be a clash between them. Um, 
the New York Times did not collaborate with Wikileaks. What they say was they got the sources from them and they have published it throughout nine separate issues. That was on only the cables, nine separate issues, um, which was mostly read by um, all their audience, basically. Um, and in my opinion, the New York Times works uh, worked as a mediator between both parties. Between both parties. Um, trying to get Assange and the United States in, 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 in a common ground, if you will. Unfortunately, in my opinion, they swayed more toward uh, WikiLeaks uh, objectives because they put the United States government under uh, a lot of tension with other governments as well. So with it, when it comes to foreign policies or in the upcoming release of documents, um, which is about Bank of America, WikiLeaks is talking that they have Bank of America, five gigabytes of Bank of America information that could harm uh, Bank of America in general. And the day that that news was released, the stocks of uh, New York Times, uh, sorry, the stocks of Bank of America actually decreased by 3%. If they were to come out and publish these things in January or February, as they say, um, they could harm the economy, the recovering economy, or the financial economy here in the United States, therefore harming the economies of the um, world as general. Um, New York Times have three obligations, in my opinion. They have obligation to their society, economy, they have obligation to their readers, and they have obligations to their stockholders. Um, in publishing these documents, if you will, the New York Times only fulfill or cover two of the um, obligations that they see. They cover their obligation to their st stockholders and the obligation to uh, the readers, where they cover the st they actually publish the story and cover it. However, they, in my opinion, failed to fulfill the uh, their obligation to their society and community. And if you look at journalism in, in general. On the on online, there are ten requirements that they go by. I only mentioned the first two. One is the truth behind the story. Two is your loyalty to your society. And in my opinion, they did not fulfill their uh, obligation to their society by publishing these um, documents. Um, I would like to read a quote by John McCain uh, about this incident in particular, if you don't mind. John McCain said in an interview, I wish the New York Times had chosen not to. McCain says in an interview, it's harmful to the United States of America and our national security interests. The argument is that it was coming out anyway, um, regarding the information that are coming out through WikiLeaks. But there is a certain imp imprimatur of the New York Times that gives it a certain degree of respectability. Which means that the New York Times has a social standard that everyone looks at it and expect what they read there is the truth after a good research. So by compromising that and publishing these in a, uh, these documents in, in, in the time in the uh, the times that we're the times that we're in war times, if you look at it, or the economical financial crisis time, they are harming their society. Therefore, the second requirement is not fulfilled by them. Um, as a solution, we thought we, as test consulting, thought that uh, the New York Times should cover the story, but not publish and support it. Uh, so they need to cover the story just like CNN did. There are so many ways that they could cover it, uh, which they failed to do. They only published the story. Uh, if, if you look at the last thing that was published by them, which was the cables, they did not receive that through WikiLeaks. They actually had to go out and get it from the Guardian because of some incidents that happened. So they, in, in, in doing that, they will fulfill all uh, 
uh, the obligations that were mentioned above. Thank you for. Thank you.